Whoa! Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the channel. My name is Frank, and today we're going to be doing something really cool. Let me get all this stringing out of my hair. Oh my God. I've now had my Creality K1 Bamboo Lab P1P and Creality K1 Max for a few weeks now, and I've been running them nearly nonstop. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about and comparing all three to each other and hopefully giving you guys better information on which one you should buy. Now, the point of this video isn't to rip on or bash any of these printers. They've all actually been rather good. I actually have review videos for each one of these, so if you want information on each specific printer more than I'm gonna give you in this video, make sure you go check them out. I'll link all three of them down below and it'll definitely tell you more about the machines. So you're in the market for your first high-speed 3D printer and a big proponent of that is obviously going to be your budget and pricing. Currently, as I'm filming this video, the Creality K1 is sitting at about $539 and you can find it for about that price on a couple other websites, but typically it's $599 or $600. That is actually the same price as the Bamboo Lab P1P. Where the bigger price jump then comes to the Creality K1 Max, which sits at $899. I think the cheapest I've seen it at this point is like $839 on Amazon during a lightning sale. And I'm sure with the holidays coming up, all three of these printers might get an even better sale. I actually have all three of these printers lined up by the size that they can print. The Creality K1 is 220 by 220 by 250. The Bamboo Lab P1P is 256 by 256 by 256. And the Creality K1 Max is 300 cubes. So 300 by 300 by 300. Also, don't worry guys, we aren't only gonna be talking about the Bamboo P1P, we will be discussing the P1S and the X1 slash X1 Carbon. Now, let me rearrange some things because I wanna cover each printer as we go up and talk about the features it provides as we get more and more expensive. So this is the Creality K1 and it does have a front glass door on it. I've just simply removed it for the sake of the video. It's easier to kind of see everything going on in there. And what you get with this printer is that standard 220 by 220 by 250 build volume, basically the same as a old Creality Ender 3. You get a fully enclosed printer where you can remove the front door. You can also take off the top. This way you can have a nice enclosed chamber if you're gonna be printing things like ABS. You actually have some very nice construction, some really good cable management. I really like the extruder feature that's on the K1 and the K1 Max. It's very easy to swap out filament. However, it doesn't have any type of camera feature, so you won't be able to monitor your prints remotely. However, you can buy the add-on camera for it for an extra 30 bucks. I got it off of Amazon, plugged it in, and it worked immediately. Next up is the Bamboo Lab P1P, and it doesn't look like this out of box. I've gone and printed a case enclosure for it. This is what it actually looks like. This way you guys know what you're getting. It's a very stripped down, bare bones 3D printer. It doesn't have a cover, it doesn't have sides, it doesn't have a case. However, it is bigger than the Creality K1. It sits at 256 by 256 by 256, and it does come with a camera. And it's the same price as the K1 when the K1 isn't on sale. My biggest complaint with the P1P has always been this cheaper little, uh, it's not even a touch screen, it's just a standard operator screen. It did feel dinky and cheap at first, but after a firmware update, I have never had a single other problem with it. I didn't quite max out this Gengar to the build volume. I forgot to scale it up after I moved it off of the K1's bed and put it onto the P1P. However, unlike the K1, the P1P can print full-size helmets. Now, I can't do every type of helmet out there. You're going to be hard-pressed to do something like a Green Goblin helmet that's really big, but standard helmets that are meant to hug your face, you actually have a good amount of room on this printer to print stuff like this. Half of the Spider-Man helmets that you see in the background were printed on my P1P, the other half were printed on my K1 Max. And nearly every single backplate was printed on the normal K1. Now, real quick, before we move on to the K1 Max, I do want to address the P1S and the X1 Carbon. If you want a printer that has an enclosure on it, but you aren't looking for anything crazy expensive, you can add just $100 to, to the Bamboo P1P and end up with the P1S. This way you can print things that need an enclosure like ABS, and it's only an extra $100. And then if you're planning on printing really exotic materials like carbon fibers and nylons, and you need that hardened steel nozzle, and you want a little bit better features on the printer itself, a better touchscreen and user interface, then you're looking at something like the X1 Carbon. But those start at $1,200 without an AMS system, and if you're not really worried about these crazy materials, there really isn't too much of a difference. It's the same size as the P1P and the P1S, but we're gonna cover a little bit more of that later. Let's move on to the K1 Max. And finally, we have the next size up, the Creality K1 Max. 300 by 300 by 300. You get all of the same features as the original K1. However, it does come with a camera. And the same as last time, it has a nice cover on top of it and it has a door. I've just gone and removed them because I printed PLA and I don't need the heat, you know, enclosed chamber, whatever. I did make this Gengar. 
as tall as possible within reason. I was trying to print it as fast as possible and it's much bigger than the one on the K1. Here's a cute little size comparison, uh, K1, K1 Max. And I definitely could have made the K1 Max one just a little bit bigger. Just like the K1 and P1P, what you see is what you get. It was ready to go basically out of the box. It has all the same features as the K1. However, this one has LiDAR detection as well, very similar to what the X1 Carbon has. So it can actually measure and read the bed and it does a lot more for leveling and getting you that nice, perfect first layer. Oh yeah, the price tag on this thing, $899, $900. And I'm really hoping they go on sale for the holidays because I want more of these. Now, you'll notice here, I have a buttload of prints sitting on the table, all from each of these printers. I wanted to make this as fair as possible. Now, I don't have to question any of these printers' reliability. Like I said, I've been printing Spider-Man helmets for some other videos and my Etsy shop for the past like three weeks. Any failures I've had on any three of these printers have 100% been my fault. Not having enough filament, not slicing something right, not putting enough supports, being a little impatient with the speeds, they've been my fault. But reliability wise, all three of them have been great. Now for this comparison, I use the exact same Sunlu filament. This isn't high speed filament. This isn't anything crazy or special. This is just standard gray Sunlu PLA plus. And each printer got a brand new fresh sealed pack. I use the exact same STLs on all three printers, same wall count, same infill, same position. I tried to make it as fair as possible and I used the stock settings in the slicer. I didn't adjust anything crazy. I literally just printed them all the same. And honestly, all three of them printed Dang near exactly the same. Supports that come off like butter. I even did something I never do when testing printers. I did a torture test. This is the Hot Makes Torture Toaster and all three of them came out the same. This is a nice little way to test your overhangs, your tolerances. Now, be honest, I accidentally printed the P1P uh, toaster using a brim, so a lot of the gears were locked together. I had to go in there and scrape some of them away, but once I got them freed of the brim, the gears worked perfectly. I was able to free the toast up even though I broke the handle because I didn't realize it had a brim on it when I pushed on it, and the little tolerances inside of it are so good that the five just the point 0.5 just fell out and disappeared. I don't actually know where it went, but the four is free, the three is three, and the two is three. Um, the one isn't free on any of them, but that would just take more dialing in, making sure you have the right temperatures for your filament and you're not over or under extruding, or just using something like a smaller nozzle. But four out of five, not bad. All three of them came out the same, and honestly, that's pretty impressive. And to give you one more comparison, I actually have a friend who has a Bamboo X1 Carbon. So I sent him the exact same STLs so he can print them on his X1 Carbon to see if they're drastically better than the P1P. And aside from using tree supports that were literally just falling off while I was trying to drive home with it, everything for the most part came out just as good. However, he does take much better care of his printer, so his surface quality and finish came out better than on the P1P, but he actually goes and tightens his belt and calibrates everything, so his quality came out beautiful. I'm actually not quite sure why his came out so much glossier. It's the same filament with the same temperatures, um, but they look really more or less the same. His toaster actually had one of the same issues. Instead of the 0.5 falling out, his 0.4 fell out and he lost it, and same as all all my other toasters, the three is free, the two is free, but the one is just locked in there because we're just running standard quality and standard nozzles. But both the P1P and the X1 Carbon, torture toasters, as good as they're gonna get. Unless you're up close looking at these, honestly, you're not gonna be able to tell too much of a difference. Um, definitely, I don't think enough to warrant double the price, especially if you're just printing in standard materials. So, what's the verdict? Which one should you get if you're in the market for one of these new high-speed 3D printers? Well, right off the bat, I'm just gonna DQ the normal Creality K1 because for the exact same price, you can get a printer that is just as good, if not has been tested a little bit more for reliability, and it's larger. Oh, and it comes with a camera, and you can add on the AMS system if you wanna print in multiple colors or materials. That's awesome. The only thing you're gonna sacrifice for losing the K1 is the entire enclosure system, but again, you can get the P1S for an extra $100, which I still think is absolutely worth it, and you're just gonna need to deal with this screen that I'm just not the biggest fan of, but you get over it super quick, especially since you can just send prints to it right from your computer. But if the P1P slash P1S still isn't large enough for you, you do have the Creality K1 Max. This has been one of the best printers I have ever used. Honestly, all three of these printers blow a lot of the bed slingers out of the water that I've tested over the years. This thing is amazing, and if you want large, fast prints on a Core XY printer, this is it. 
The P1P, P1S, still rather large for what you get and what you pay for, but for an extra $200 to $300, depending on the jump, the K1 Max is incredible, especially if you're into this for making props or cosplay. If you're watching my channel, you probably are. This printer is amazing, but if you just don't quite have the $900 budget, you will not be sad getting the Bamboo Lab P1P. This printer is just as awesome. If you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns, please leave a comment down below. I read all of them and I will do my best to respond to as many as possible. Ooh, and because you stayed this long in the video, you get to find out early before anybody else. To celebrate 1 million YouTube subscribers, we are gonna be hosting a massive live stream giveaway right here on YouTube. Not only are we giving away a brand new Bamboo Lab P1P, yeah, a P1P, brand new, we're gonna be giving away multiple Elegoo 3D printers, a couple kilograms of filament, like a lot. I think we have 50 rolls to give away, some 3D file gift cards, some 3D file subscription services, and some actual physical props maybe some cool Captain America shields. So you guys, you do not wanna miss this giveaway. It will be scheduled eventually on my YouTube, but make sure you're following me on Instagram too, cause it'll be in my story. And maybe if the live stream goes good enough, we'll also be doing a special giveaway after the fact on all of my social media. This way, if you can't make the live stream, you still have a chance to win something awesome. And that will be hosted on Instagram and TikTok. So stay tuned for that. I cannot wait. So guys, thank you so much for all of the continued support. I get to wake up and do the coolest job in the world every day. I love this stuff and it's all thanks to you guys. So as always, thank you so much for watching and you guys have a good day. Mimi go bye bye.